Hello and welcome to a new jazz lesson. In this video we will look into the ascending melodic minor scale and all its family variants. That will be seven great jazz scales in total. We will learn how to use all these scales when improvising over the 251 chord progression. Now Listen to the sound of these fantastic scales when playing a 2-5-1 progression. We will start this lesson making a theoretic foundation. We will learn how to manage all the seven scales using a simple circular system. Then we will learn how to use the scales in practice. So first theory, then practice. By the way, my name is Oliver Prehn and I surely hope you will enjoy this journey into the very nature of the ascending minor melodic scales. Okay, the ascending melodic minor scale in C goes like this. It starts up as a natural minor scale with uh, the E flat note. And it ends as a major scale, right? So looking up an ascending melodic minor scale, we actually just make the major scale. And then we flatten the major third to a minor third. And here we have the ascending melodic minor scale. This melodic minor scale comes in seven variants. To manage the seven scales, we draw a circle. The circle of melodic minor scales. This circular tool we are about to make is very useful and handy. It orders and connects all the variants of the ascending melodic minor scale. So this will be goal for us when improvising jazz. Inside the melodic minor scale we have seven notes, right? So let's make seven markers on the circle. One marker for each scale note. The first note, the key note, in the scale, we define to be the 12 o'clock marker. Then the next marker is the second step. Next marker, third step. Fourth step. Fifth step. Sixth step. And the seventh step. Now, let's also write the intervals to the circle. So, first we have a whole step, then a half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, and finally a half step. Now the trick is very simple. We let a new scale start from every marker on the circle. So if we let the scale start from the 12 o'clock marker, we got the ascending melodic minor scale. On the second marker, we got the Dorian flat 2 scale. This scale is like the Dorian scale, but with a lowered second step. Not a very well-known scale, but that doesn't mean it's not interesting. We will discover that later on. Starting from the third marker on the circle, we got the Lydian Augmented Scale. It's like a Lydian scale, but with an augmented fifth. If we start up the scale from the 4th marker, we got the Lydian Dominant Scale.
maybe you have heard about that scale before. It's like a Lydian scale, but with a lower dominant seventh step. If we build up a scale from the fifth marker on the circle, we got the Aeolian dominant scale. It's like the Aeolian scale, but it has a dominant flavor because we raise the minor third to the major third. Some people call this scale Hindu scale. The sound of this scale is special with this almost meditative nice mixture of minor and major. On the sixth degree we got the half diminished scale. It's like a diminished scale with its whole and half steps in the beginning. But then it ends up with only whole steps. That's why some people call this scale half diminished. I also like the name Locrian Sharp 2 because it's like the Locrian scale. But with a raised second step. Finally, on the last marker, we got an often used dominant scale with many names. You may know this scale. It is very often used in jazz improvisation. We can entitle this scale Super Locrian because it's like the Locrian scale that has this unique diminished fifth. In the Super Locrian we also diminish the fourth. So the scale is kind of super diminished. So therefore we have the name Super Locrian. Another name is Diminished whole tone, because the scale start, uh, starts as a diminished scale and ends up with only whole tones. We can also use the name Alter Dominant Scale, because the scale has a dominant sound and lots of altered notes. More about that later on. So, now, here on this circle, we got the entire family of melodic minor scales. Most of these scales are very often used in jazz improvisation, so it's a good thing to be able to manage this circle. Notice that all seven scales are actually just degrees of each other. So it's all about picking the right starting point, and you got the different scales, right? Okay, all this was theory. Soon we will make music. We will find out when and how to use the scales when we improvise jazz. Let's write down a 2-5-1 chord progression in minor. So, what scales from our circle can we use when improvising over this chord progression? Let's start with the D minor 7 flat 5 chord. What scale fits this chord? Well, let's try with the D Locrian sharp 2 scale. From the D note, we make the scale by using the, the interval steps on the circle. So we start up with a whole step, a half step, a whole step, a half step, and three whole steps. So here we have the D. Locrian sharp 2 scale. The question is, 
Does the D minor 7 flat 5 chord fit inside this scale? Let us try this out. Yes, all the D minor 7 flat 5 notes are contained inside the D Locrian sharp 2 scale. So, how does this sound? Really nice, right? Compared to the Locrian scale, we have this sharp 2 step that brightens the sound. And I really like that. So let's write the minor B5 chord at the Locrian sharp 2 scale on the circle. Okay. Next chord, the G7 chord. Can we, for example, use the altered dominant scale for this chord? Let's try to build up the G altered scale using the circle. Half step, whole step, half step, and four whole steps. Does the G7 chord fit this scale? Well, the key note and the major third and the seventh fits well. And here we got the three most important chord notes that makes the dominant effect. But we have to alter the fifth to either the diminished version or the augmented version. So how does it sound when improvising over the G7 altered chord using the altered scale. Well, that's a spicy jazzy scale, right? I think it works great. It makes a lot of suspension to be resolved when hitting the tonic C minor. So let's write the seven altered chord to the altered dominant scale on the circle. Okay, on the tonic C minor major seven chord, we can use the ascending melodic minor scale. And look, the C minor major 7 chord fits. So how does this scale sound when making a solo over the C minor chord? Not too bad, right? Let's write the minor major 7 chord to the circle. Okay, let's try to play the entire 2-5-1 progression. Now we play Locrian sharp 2 on the D minor flat 5 chord. Altered scale on the altered 7 chord and melodic minor on the C minor chord. Maybe you are wondering about the left hand voicing. This video is not about left hand voicing, but we should indeed have a lesson about the left hand later on. Okay, now we will use this family of scales when playing 2-5-1 in major. And we will make great sound to that chord progression as well. So stay tuned. Let's write down a 2-5-1 chord progression in C major. 
And let's look closer at the, the dominant G7 chord. What about using the Lydian dominant scale for this chord? Three whole steps, a half step, whole step, half step, and a whole step. And look, the G7 chord fits perfectly. So, how does the 251 sound when playing the Lydian dominant on the G7 chord? Really nice, right? We have this augmented fourth step that I like very much. So, let's write the 7 chord to the circle. On the D minor and C chord I play Dorian and Lydian, by the way. In another lesson, we use these church modes to play 2-5-1. I will paste a link to that lesson in the description below. Okay, what about the C major 7 chord? Can we do something jazzy when improvising over this chord? Yes, we can play the Lydian augmented scale. Four whole steps, a half step, whole step, and a half step. The Lydian scale is almost like the Ionian scale. We just augment the fourth step. And then we take this Lydian scale and augment the fifth step also. And then we have the Lydian augmented scale. A super bright tonic sound. So, does the C major 7 chord fit the Lydian augmented scale? Well, if we augment the fifth in the chord, it does. So let's hear the sound when improvising 251 using the augmented Lydian scale on the C major 7 augmented chord. I really like this super bright Lydian sound on the tonic chord. So, let's write the major 7 augmented chord to the circle. Okay, now we have only two more scales to walk through. Maybe they are not so well known, but we should not forget these two family members, because they sound great and they are very useful. Now, let's look closer at the D Dorian flat 2 scale. What type of chord fits this scale? Well, the D minor 7 chord does. Let's hear the sound of the Dorian flat 2. Let's write the minor 7 chord to the circle. Okay, what about the Hindu scale in G? What chord fits this scale? Well, the G7 chord does. And we have a sound like this. Let's also write the 7 chord to the circle. OK. If we play D minor 7 to G7 to C minor major 7, 
we can actually play the same keys at every chord using different variants from the circle. Now, watch how this goes. Look, we use the exact same piano keys, shifting from B e Dorian flat 2 to G Hindu to C melodic minor. It's the same keys for the entire chord progression. Okay, so what have we learned in this lesson? Well, there are in total seven variants of scales all belonging to the same family. The ascending melodic minor scale is one of the seven family members. All these scales are very useful when improvising jazz. The seven scales can be placed in a single circular system. The seven scales have the same circular interval pattern, but they all have different starting points. In other words, the scales are in different degrees of each other. In another lesson, we build up a similar system making the circle of church modes. These church modes are also very useful when improvising jazz. I will paste a link to that lesson in the description below. Well, that's it from now. I've just created a Patreon if you want to support my work with a dollar. But I must say, music stuff should be cost-free in my opinion. Music is not a secret thing, so you should not feel obligated to donate anything. Just by watching the new jazz creations and videos, you make all the support I need. So feel free to benefit from all my work at all times. That's the main purpose of the new jazz project. But anyhow, with donations, I can cut down the hours at my regular daytime work to produce even more videos. So donations are, of course, very much appreciated. Well, the very best and warm regards from Oliver Prehn.